Hi folks, this is Steve from the Pistol Place and welcome to this video update on the KWC P08 Luger. I've known the P08 for around three months um, and I thought I'd post up some additional thoughts after my initial review on this replica. First thing I'll mention is cooldown. Uh, I did mention this in the original review, but the more I use this replica, the more apparent it becomes. If you shoot fairly rapidly, cooldown is really quite serious. It's bad enough that you can actually hear the tone of shots changing and the power dropping. To get this thing to fire with consistent power, you can't shoot any more quickly than a shot every three or four seconds or thereabouts. may not be an issue to you. If you don't shoot quickly, then it won't be a problem. If you do want to shoot rapidly, it, it is an issue, and I'm not sure why it is. The magazine in the P08 is similar to the magazines in a number of 1911 replicas also produced by KWC, including the Tanfoglio Witness, in that the sides of the magazine are cut away. It's such a slim magazine that there just isn't room to fit CO2 inside it. One of the things that means is as you're shooting, you can actually feel the grip getting cold when you shoot. It's not a problem, it's not an issue, but it does indicate that things are getting very cold inside there and power does seem to drop fairly quickly, more qu quickly than I would have expected. I'm also surprised about how few shots I get per CO2. Generally I can get around three magazines worth, that's 45 shots on a 6mm version. Not as good as, for example, I've had out of other KWC replicas, and I don't really understand why. Uh, on the Luger, we don't have a moving slide. There is this toggle mechanism, and you would assume that it would be easier for the CO2 to blow back the toggle than it would be a full-size slide. And it doesn't seem to be that way, and CO2 consumption really isn't particularly good. Something else I've become aware of is that the P08 seems very sensitive to any sort of contamination of the hop-up. It does have hop-up, but it's fixed hop-up, it can't be adjusted. So there's a hop-up rubber inside the barrel, which causes the BB to spin as it passes through the barrel. If, like me, you're used to putting a dab of oil onto the main CO2 seal when you load CO2, that then is blown through the internal parts of the pistol and into the inner barrel. It certainly, the, the, the PO8 seems very sensitive to that and it performs notably worse if there is any oil contamination on the inner barrel. I've done a couple of shooting videos that I hope will explain that. So if we look at the first one now, this is shooting 10 shots, 6 metres, fresh CO2, and it's with some oil contamination on the barrel. So let's have a look at that now. Okay, you can see that's not great. Um, grouping is somewhere about two and a half inches, which is much worse than the PO8 normally does. And what I've noticed is that as the oil wears off the inner barrel and the hop-up rubber, it gets better. Uh, to show this, what I've done is I've cleaned the internal barrel out, put in another fresh CO2 with no oil on it, and I've shot that again in exactly the same circumstances for the first string of 10 shots. So 6 metres, 0.25 gram BBs, fresh CO2. Have a look at that now and hopefully you will see the difference.
Okay, hopefully if you've looked at that second shooting video, you'll see the grouping is much better if you exclude the first shot, which seemed to go fairly wild, that may have been down to me. The grouping isn't much over an inch, and that, that's what I typically see from the PO8 with a clean barrel. It does seem like oil is causing a problem on the hopper rubber, and I'm coming to think that I probably won't be putting oil onto the CO2 seal when I'm using this replica because it affects accuracy so badly. The third and final thing that I've noticed that I didn't notice when I originally got the pistol is that the barrel is slightly loose, and the, the outer barrel that is. I'll try and show you, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it or not, but you can move the outer barrel probably, I'd say, a little bit over a millimetre at the muzzle end. The barrel's held in place by a couple of set screws, but they don't hold it tightly in place. I don't think that's affecting accuracy, but what's notable is that the barrel normally sits pointing slightly up. You can move it down, but it always moves back to the up position. And I don't know whether that may be contributing to the fact that it still shoots a little bit high at 6 metres. I'd say about an inch and a half to 2 inches high at 6 metres. OK, so after three months and taking all these things into account, what do I think of the KWC P08? I've got to say, I still think it's the best Luger replica that's currently available. Yes, it does have some issues, but it's still a hefty, well-balanced replica. It's a very nice replica, indeed, of the P08 pistol in function and looks. There isn't a better one. It seems to be entirely reliable. I noted some wear on internal parts when I did the original review, but that doesn't seem to have got any worse, so maybe that's just part of the pistol breaking in. And overall, it seems to work pretty reliably. So even taking into account the cool down, looseness on the barrel and some inaccuracy that seems to be caused by oil on the hop up rubber, I'm still going to say this is a good replica and it's one that's worth adding to your collection. I noticed that there is also now an Umarex Legends version which appears to be also based on the KWC Luger in addition to this GSG one that I originally bought. So hopefully it'll be slightly easier to find and if you're going to put up with some slight drawbacks, which I assume would apply to the 4.5mm as well as the 6mm version, it's a good solid replica and I would still recommend it. Thanks for watching.